and it was the third hour when they crucified him. And the inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two robbers, one on his right, one on his left. And those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Ha! You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross. Also the chief priests with the scribes mocked him one to another, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. And those who were crucified with him also reviled him. And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama shabbatana, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, Behold, he is calling Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with the sour wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, <clears> saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood facing him saw that this way he breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was the son of there were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, the younger, and of Joses, and Salome. When he was in Galilee, they followed him and ministered to him. And there were also many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. And when evening had come, since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who also himself was looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate the governor and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was surprised to hear that he should have already died, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he was already dead. And when he had learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the courts to Joseph. And Joseph brought, bought a linen shroud, and taking him down, wrapped him in the linen shroud, and laid him in a tomb that had been cut out of the rock. He rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Sony, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him very early on the first day of the week. When the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And there were saying to one another, who will roll away the stone from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had already been rolled back, and it was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. He, he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You see Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. 
He is not here. Amen. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. Now when he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him as they mourned and wept. But when they heard that he was alive, he had been seen by her, that they would not believe it. After these things, he appeared in another form to two of them as they were walking into the country. And they went back and told the rest, but they did not believe him. Afterward, he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were reclining at the table, and he rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world, proclaim the gospel to all of creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. This is the greatest day to be celebrating our risen Lord and Savior. And I don't expect for my abilities alone to say anything that's not been already heard or to say something that would cause inspiration or motivation. Lord God, I'm going to solely Totally, totally, completely rely on the work of the Holy Spirit to preach in such a way that hearts will be changed. Sin would be repented from. People who are indifferent to the gospel would have a passion and a fire within them. And that if there is someone who thinks all of this is crazy nonsense, that they would hear the living voice of Jesus Christ this morning calling them to be saved, to experience the life that he gives, that he is not a dead Savior, but a living Savior. Oh, what a day of rejoicing it will be here at Sterling Baptist this morning. Please, I beg you, please, don't leave me here alone. Hmm. only right that we have and that is in the name of Jesus your son our savior in his name we pray and all the people said amen, amen. wow look at all of you here <coughs> you've all crammed in like sardines <laughs> but you don't smell like it Ooh, thank God. <laughs> it's amazing I'd like to see all the beautiful colors out here and um, uh, let me say to you good morning 
Uh, many of you I am getting to know better and better. I guess this is only my fifth week, fourth week. I don't even know. I've been here a month now, right? Um, so if I'm new to you, uh, welcome, Mr. William. But maybe you've been here for a while. Maybe this is uh, your church home uh, more so than it is mine. But nonetheless, I'm glad that you're here. And uh, I'm glad to see such a wonderful crowd out this morning. If you have a Bible with you, I encourage you to turn with me to the book of Acts, chapter 5. Book of Acts, chapter 5. What I read for you was Mark's account, Mark, St. Mark, the Gospel of Mark's account of Jesus' crucifixion, death, burial, and resurrection. Let me tell you one of one of my hopes, or at least one of my goals for this morning. And I'm so glad to say. Now, were you there? Amen. When they crucified my Lord, were you there when they hung him upon the tree? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when he rose up from the grave? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble. Tremble. To tremble. Do you see that there, what I read in Mark? When they left the tomb, when they had seen and been told by the angels that the one that they were coming to see to bring spices upon his dead body was no longer there, but was alive. Yes, indeed. Sometimes it causes me to this day to tremble. They left with trembling and astonishment. You know the word there in Greek is ecstasis. We get the word ecstasy. message 50, 60 times now over the years. And if a preacher is any good, and, and I think the best way to make a preacher good is to make sure that he's always mentioning the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ, then if you've heard that on every Sunday that you've been here, you have heard in your lifetime hundreds and hundreds of times that Jesus died on the cross Jesus was put in the tomb. Jesus came out of the tomb on the third day. And we hinge our faith in him on that. Amen. We've heard that for how many years? Amen. Does it still cause you to tremble? Is there any ecstasy in that? Does it not keep your blood pumping? Does it not cause your mind to to just think about things that are beyond your imagination? Or are you so jaded and indifferent to the fact that Jesus Christ is alive? Because you're so numb to it. My challenge for us this morning is to be more ecstatic. Amen. To have a little more tremble about it, to be a little more astonished at the fact that 2,000 years ago, this Jesus who truly existed did die, and he did rise from the grave. Amen. The very nature of the church shows that. And if you're here today because it's Easter, we're, we're thankful that you're here. I pray that you come back. Amen. But even if you're not, I, I was just looking up, some, I'm going to share some quotes with you today and a lot of scripture. You may not know who Trey Parker is. If you do, that tells me a little bit about you. So don't, unless you, uh, if you know who it is, it's fine. But 
Trey Parker said this, and I'm sure you, he's not Christian. At least his work doesn't show that he is. He says, even if you're not Christian, just being in our culture, you know Jesus and his resurrection and redemption. The very essence that you are here today, you're saying to yourself, there's something about it that's going on. You may be incredibly skeptical. And you're just here because your spouse said, we're going today. <laughs> or your parent said, you're going today. Richard Dawkins, who was a, I guess, I'm not sure if he's still alive or not. Dead. Dead, thank you. He said this about our Savior, Jesus. He said, presumably, what happened to Jesus was what happens to all of us when we die. We decompose. Accounts of Jesus' resurrection and ascension are about as well documented as Jack and the Beanstalk. Oh, man. Why do we come here today? What are we celebrating? For those of you that you're only here today and you won't be back until Christmas, I'm not attempting to insult you, but I just know that I've been doing this long enough to know that that happened. I'm glad you're here, and I, I, I certainly didn't mean to step on your toes or offend you, but I won't well, be back. Show him. <laughs> Don't take the attitude of Richard Dawkins, right? I mean, if Jesus Christ truly did what he did. Let me share with you one other quote from Jaroslav Pelikan. If Christ is risen, nothing else matters. And if Christ is not, is not risen, nothing else matters. Let me say it another way. If Christ did not rise from the grave, nothing matters. Not a single thing. We are in line with Richard Dawkins. We're all going to die one day, decompose. That's it. Today you could have gone to the lake. You could have had an early lunch. Got there before the rest of the church crowds. Which, by the way, I'm going to preach long enough so that they'll clear out for lunch. <laughs> have you, you give you the opportunity. You're welcome. <clears throat> but if Jesus did, rise from the dead. Nothing matters more. If that event occurred, mm -hmm. there is nothing in human history that has ever occurred that is of the that great of importance. I'm reading for you something in Acts because uh, one of the things that gives me proof is the very nature that we're here this morning I don't know how long Surya Vatis has been in, uh, in existence has anyone got that figure imagine 18 something 18 what? 1858. 1858. It's been, been around for a while. That, that's, that's older, oh no, that's, that's older Brother Wilbur. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that amazed me is the fact that we're all hinging our faith based on the testimony of people that are now gone. Do you realize the people in 1858 that established this congregation to promote Jesus Christ in this community or that are now all gone has perpetuated forward because of their work. I believe in Jesus Christ because of the work of at least two individuals in my life. My mom and my dad. My dad's gone now. 
So much of the work of the church is based and rested upon the shoulders of efforts of people who are long gone. And I think about it in this way. Brother Wilburn, if I, I pick on Brother Wilburn, I got his permission the last, I did it last time without his permission, now I got it. <laughs> no one's older than you here, I'm, I'm assuming. Is anyone older than Brother 93? Is anyone older than 93? Okay, great. Not, not great, like, you know, a little older. <laughs> So, 90, within 93 years, when Brother Wilburn was born and brought into this world, there was a church somewhere in existence. And his parents probably brought him to church. And maybe the generation before that, they were brought in. You see, we're building on generations of a word going out that someone, somewhere along the way, said, this Jesus, who is the Son of God, died on the cross. He was put in a tomb. He was came out of the tomb by the power of God. And that he lives forevermore. And they've been telling it for hundreds of years. And we believe it still to this day. And we will proclaim it till he returns. Amen. Which may be in this generation. Amen. Or maybe the next generation. That is why it is so of the utmost importance. If Christ did not rise from the grave, nothing matters. If Christ did rise from the grave, nothing matters more Amen. than that. So here in this story of Acts chapter 5, we meet someone who has incredible wisdom. His name is Gamaliel. I'm starting verse 27 of Acts. And when they had brought them, that is the disciples, Peter and John and the rest of them, they set them before the council. And the high priest questioned them, saying, We strictly charge you not to teach in this name. That name is Jesus, by the way. We didn't want you speaking of anything. The cultural Leaders of the time, the spiritual leaders of the time said, don't be talking anything more about this. And now you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us? But Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than men. Amen. The God of our fathers raised Jesus. Here they are. Just within months they're already out beginning the Jesus movement, if you will. The God of our fathers raised Jesus. They're mentioning that of the resurrection whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. So is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. Now when the council heard this, they were mad. And they were enraged. And they wanted to kill him. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to everyone outside. But these guys outside want to talk to I'm paraphrasing here, of course. Let's put these men outside for a while. And he said to them, Men of Israel, take care of what you are about to do with these men. I want you to remember, he said, Thaddeus. This man, Thaddeus, he was claiming to be somebody. About 400 men followed him and joined him. But when he was killed, all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. Maybe you remember Judas the Galilean who rose up in the days of the census 
and he drew away many number of people after him. He too perished, and everyone who followed him is now scattered. So in this present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. Why? If this plan or undertaking is of man, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to stop it. Amen. 2,000 years later, here we are still. So much of my faith in Christ and his crucifixion and resurrection is the very fact that you are here today and that I'm here today. Do you want to find yourself opposing God? You just speak against the resurrection. You speak against Jesus as the Son of God. You speak against his cross. You speak against all that. You're going to find yourself opposing God. And the church is the way. Let me share one more quote with you. Many of you may know who Chuck Colson is. Mm. Chuck Colson was a high-ranking member of the Richard Nixon's cabinet. And this is what he said. He says, I know the resurrection is a fact. And Watergate proved it to me. Watergate was a little bit before my time. Some of you might remember he said, Watergate proved it to me. How? Because 12 men testified they had seen Jesus raised from the dead. And they proclaimed that truth for 40 years, never once denying it. Every one of them was beaten, tortured, stoned, put in prison, or eventually killed for, the, for their faith. They would not have endured that if it were not true. Amen. Amen. Watergate embroiled 12 of the most powerful men in the United States, and they couldn't keep a lie for three weeks. Hmm. You're telling me 12 apostles could keep a lie for 40 years? Absolutely impossible. This is not a lie that we celebrate. Amen. This is not a fraud. This is not a deception. Our very faith rests on Jesus' resurrection. Amen. My girls were asking me, they said, well, I guess because you can't make a good symbol out of it. They were talking about how the symbol of Christianity is the cross and, and, and how important that is because that was Jesus' way of dying and, and we proclaimed his death. <laughs> You see, Christ demonstrated that he was man by dying. But then he demonstrated that he was God by coming up out of the grave. Amen. And they were like, why can't we symbolize somehow the empty tomb and the stone rolled away? And I was like, yes, that's actually quite an idea because so much of us are focused on Christ's death on the cross. And we focus so much, very little, on the fact that that cross did not stop him. Amen. It only took our sins upon him so that God would be satisfied with our sins. Do you realize that it was you and my sins that put Jesus there in the first place? Mm -hmm. And God's love said, i got to do something about this. So that payment in full could be acknowledged, Jesus Christ rose again from the grave. First Corinthians 15 says, How can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? The very fact that you're here is saying that there's something about it. But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching, my preaching, any preacher, any evangelist, 
Billy Graham, you name it, you name it. They're all in vain. And your faith is in vain. What are you doing here? You're still in sin. Just like your last generation. Everyone who has died before us has perished and decomposed, as Richard Dawkins said. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we of all the people of the planet of all time are the most pitiful. Mm. If it only gives us comfort on Sundays and in those moments when life is its toughest, that's pitiful. If Jesus Christ didn't rise from the grave. When Gabriel was saying, Is this plan or other things of man? It will fail. But we don't believe it to be a fraud or a deception. It's interesting that the Pharisees, the religious leaders, Matthew 27, believe about his resurrection. It says the next day, that is after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered the whole crowd and said, Sir, we remember how that imposter said, while he was alive, after three days, I will rise. The religious leaders remembered him saying, he said it, if you were going to Matthew's account, he said it in chapter 16, he said it in chapter 17, he said it in chapter 20, three times he's telling his disciples, I'm going to Jerusalem, they're going to hand me over to the Gentile men, to the soldiers of Rome, they're going to execute me on a cross, but I will rise again. Three times at least in scripture, he told his disciples that. Where are his disciples now? They're scattered and scared. But here's the religious leaders. We remember him saying, mm. after three days I will rise. So they asked that the tomb be made secure until the third day, lest the disciples go and steal him away and tell the people that he has risen from the dead. And that is the last fraud, the last deception, the last deceit, the last lie, the last error will be worse than the first. I totally get why Sam was skeptical. Up and down these roads, and if Trey Parker's right, they, they know enough just from our culture, enough about well, whatever they're doing in there, it's probably something about Jesus right now. And if they're singing, they're probably singing about Jesus. And uh, and, and, and so many have already established because uh, a lot of people they, they went to church when they were kids, they were drugged there, and they, they haven't made it dark to the church doors in, in years, and so they probably have a recollection. Yeah, the, the Bible that they use, it's used, that King James Version is 400-something years old. And they've been preaching the same message Sunday after Sunday. So some of them have a recollection or an idea of what goes on here. serve together. I want us to worship Christ together. I want us to have many more Easter's. This is very special. This is our first Easter together. Isn't it great? <laughs> Amen. I was just thinking, guys, this is great. And, and, and I'm ministering to, to this, and, and y'all have heard 
heard this message over and over and over. And my, the sadness that, that overwhelms me is the fact that some of you will leave here unfazed mm. by anything I just said. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. You will go about your life as if there was no Jesus. As if he wasn't ever put on the cross. As if he ever raised from the dead. That's what we need to change and to be false. So that something goes on in here that reverberates in such a way that they'd be like, I don't know what's going on in there, but it is something. And something incredible. I'd like to close with allowing Jesus himself to have in the final words about his resurrection. Several days, probably just a few weeks before, Jesus was at a graveside of a dear friend. Many of you probably know the story, but you've heard it before. I'm not going to go into the whole story as it comes. I'm going to go into one of the things he said at that graveside before he raised. It was a family of two sisters and a brother. The brother was Lazarus. He had been laying in the tomb now for four days. The two sisters were Martha and Mary. Mary, excuse me, Martha said to him, If you had been here, my brother would not have died. Now, I want everyone to just not be overly morbid, but every one of us will face that one of these days. We will face death. So what we're doing here is banking on something for that moment. You're putting in an earnest. You're putting down a deposit. Of saying, you know, when that moment comes, I want someone to be there by my side. Amen. And you know who that person is? It's Jesus. And this is what Jesus said. He said, I know that, or excuse me, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection Amen. and the life. Everything that has to, that funnels through into death. Jesus says, I am what's beyond it. I am life. I'm the one who gives life. We can't expect someone dead to give us life. But if Jesus Christ is alive, then yes, I can believe that he can give us life. And that we'll go beyond the grave. I've used this example before, not with you, but when I was younger, I played football. Not well, but I played. One of my favorite things to do was to, when they had the band and they had the cheerleaders and all that all lined up and we'd come running around, but there was this banner there made out of you know, crepe paper or construction paper or what have you. It was thin, right? And our only thing we had to do is just run through there, right? Opposing team couldn't see us, right? We're hiding behind this construction wall, construction paper wall, and everything like that. Oh, we're getting psyched up. We're going to go run through that and everything. And you got to be careful because, you know, oh, so and so is a little more anxious and everything. I, I'm going to hang back a little bit. Or I'm going to trip over him and everything. But everyone wanted to have that first part because if you're in the back, it didn't matter because you weren't going to get any of that construction paper left. You wanted to be in the front to bust through that, right? We who are in Christ who are born again believers, when we hit death, we're just going to bust right through it. Amen. People without Christ will hit a wall and they're going to drop because it is a weight and a substance that they can't get through. We need someone who's already gone through it and that is Christ. He is the resurrection and he is the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, because you will, 
That's right. Yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Amen. Everyone who lives and believes. A lot of you are here today because you believe it. Not everyone here is here today because you live it. Mm. What will get you to heaven through Jesus Christ is living in him, not just believing in him. Mm. Look at James says, the demons believe and tremble. <laughs> That's right. They're scared of Jesus. That's not faith. Faith is entering into a relationship with Jesus, the Son of God. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Everyone who lives in me, everyone who believes in me, <clears throat> shall never die. You're just going to run right through. Amen. And he closes with this question. Do you believe this? Is it a fraud that we're doing? I mean, they, they, they were asking Jesus, come down off the cross and we will believe. You saved others, save yourself, and then we will believe. And Jesus is like, I got one better. I'm going to stay on this cross. I'm going to take the sins of my people so that they can have access to their God, so that they will have a resurrection of their own, so that they will have eternal life. I'm going to stay here on the cross until I fully die. They're going to put me in a grave. And then you want me to show that I'm Christ? You want me to show that I'm the Son of God? You want me to demonstrate how powerful God is? I'm coming up out of there. Amen. And that is what we celebrate. That's right. Today, next Sunday, every day. If you're a Christian, be thankful. Be grateful. Be happy. Be blessed. For the work that Jesus Christ has done. If you're not, then let's pray. Heavenly Father, <laughs> God, there is someone here today. There is no connection. They're alienated, they're separate. Jesus means nothing to them. We were all once like that. I thank God for your grace. You moved upon me in, in such a way day after day after day. So that we get a lot of the old out. And allow that newness of Jesus come in. Maybe there's someone today that just needs to rededicate, recommit. Just as the time of preaching was yours, Lord God. And I did it as faithful as I could. This is your time to move upon people with the, with the power that rose Jesus from the dead. To move within the people here to make whatever decision is necessary. The altar is open. I'm available for Whatever the need may be, good Lord, just don't let us leave here as if the resurrection never happened. Mm -hmm. That is, I cannot think of a greater tragedy than for us just to all leave and say, what's for lunch? Mm -hmm. Do I still have that appointment next week? Mm -hmm. I should get to know, uh, be friends with so-and-so again. These things don't matter. But Jesus rose from the grave, which we proclaim that he did. Nothing matters more. So help us to be reckoned with that. Thank you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 What number will we 417. We'll stand together. 417. <laughs>